This video explains how to turn off automatic updates for a WordPress site on Bluehost. And secondly, it looks at how to replace the index.php file on a Moodle site that is no longer accessible. My name is Adewale Adishina and this is the 14th of August 2020. If you have a Moodle site on Bluehost, sometimes you can wake up and find out that the site is gone. It is no longer accessible. And so this video will focus on how to solve that problem when your Moodle site suddenly is no longer accessible. And instead, a WordPress site shows up. Maybe this might be due to some automated update or something else. First, let's look at why updates. Now, automated or automatic updates are very important because it allows users to keep their software programs up to date without having to check for and install updates manually. Now the system does it automatically and it saves a lot of time and effort. For instance, if you look at your Microsoft Windows operating system, there is automatic updates going on all the time. Uh, it helps to keep the windows up to date and sometimes your system has to reboot and then it tells you updating uh, installing updates and then gets back on stream the reason is because updates help to keep your software application better protected from viruses and hacking hacking attempts by different nefarious people around the world Another important reason for having updates is that they help provide the latest bug fixes, feature updates, and very important uh, modifications the system might need. Now let's look at WordPress installation on Bluehost. Now in recent times, Bluehost has completely revamped their web hosting environment and made it more WordPress oriented. That is, it is easier to work with WordPress when you are on Bluehost. Now on Bluehost, WordPress is automatically installed and set up when you just procure or buy a new web hosting space. So this makes it very, very easy to build a WordPress site. And you, don't, you don't even require the usual one-click installer. Simply buying the site and logging into your account gives you an automatic access uh, to WordPress. This is very nice and it makes building websites better and more interesting. However, there can be some problems. If your site is a Moodle site instead of a WordPress site, there can be some challenges because suddenly you'll find out that one day it is possible if it is not well set up your site can just stop working and instead you see WordPress showing. And this has happened to many people. Now this can be very, very uh, disturbing in the first instance, but then do not use your energy to worry. Just focus on these two steps and you'll be back on stream with your Moodle site. The first thing to do is to turn off WordPress automatic updates in the control panel. And then the second thing to do, if your Moodle site is not coming up at all, just replace the WordPress index.php file in your public HTML folder with a Moodle's index.php file. Now let's look at step one, which involves turning off automatic WordPress updates. The first thing to do is log into your Bluehost account, then go to my sites after which you click on manage site on the WordPress site block. Then you select the settings tab. Lastly, you just turn off WordPress core plugins and themes. Now these are very practical steps. Uh, this will be shown in the following demo. So first go to your Bluehost site. So here I am in the Bluehost hosting site. So the next thing I do is I log in with my email or domain name. In this case, I have my domain name and account here. So I'll just click on login. 
So here I am logged into my Bluehost account and I can see my navigation bars here, home, my sites, marketplace, on and on. And so the first thing I'll do is to go to my sites. So my sites takes me to all the sites I have installed on this system. So it tells me I have a welcome site here. Uh, and this is a WordPress site with the WordPress uh, logo. And this is the URL that accesses that site. So the next thing to do is to click on Manage Sites. Now Manage Site takes me to where I'll see many more tabs that I can use to control and manage the site, but I'm just interested in the Settings tab. Okay, so coming over to the Settings tab, click on it. By the way, it tells me I'm up to date here. So click on the Settings tab. So it brings me to this point where I have, this is the site URL that is on my site. Okay, here I am on the Settings tab. I have like the site URL and where it takes me. So it says I have in here WordPress core, automatic updates for WordPress core is on, for plugins on, for teams on. Now what this means is anytime there is an update to uh, WordPress, my URL will automatically uh, get that new update. And, but in this URL, I don't want WordPress. Instead, I want it to go straight to my Moodle site. So the way to go is just to turn off automatic updates for especially WordPress core. So this will stop it from rewriting any files or changing anything on my system when there is an update. So it's also safe to, to turn off plugins and also turn off uh, teams. So that is all that is required. So you have turned off automatic updates uh, because you don't really need WordPress. This is not a function of this site. And then that's that's all for step one. Now the second step is only needed if you are not able to access your Moodle site at all and it's just showing WordPress. So just follow these steps and then you get back your Moodle site. First, so the step is upload a Moodle index.php file. How do you do that? Just follow these steps. One, log in to your Bluehost account, then click on advanced. Under files, click on file manager, then click on public HTML. Locate the index.php file and rename it to say badindex.php. Okay, so just upload a functioning Moodle index.php file and you'll be good to go. You may ask, where do you get a functioning Moodle index.php file? So you can get this by downloading a version of your Moodle and then extract it, going into the folder and get the index.php file. Uh, I've also uploaded one on a Google Drive that can be obtained from this URL, and the URL can be found also in the description column. So you can copy it, download the index.php file for Moodle, and it will get your site uh, back up. All these are practical steps, and we're going to do it in demo two. So now let's go to our Bluehost account. So click on www.bluehost.com. Just before I get to the control panel, let me first show the problem. So you have this site, uh, unisessence.com, uh, which was originally a Moodle site. When you come into this site, you get this information, hello world, just another WordPress site. And this is not the site that we are looking for. So something had happened. So it has changed back to WordPress. So get it back to what it used to be. That's the Moodle site that we had on it. So like I said earlier on, the first thing is you go to the Bluehost control panel. Okay, so I'm logged in. 
as into the account of the user. So you come in to the advanced section. So click on advanced. This takes us to the control panel itself where you have all the different icons. While in the control panel, look for the file manager, which is under files. So just click on file manager. Now file manager takes us to all the list of files we have on the system. So while inside the file manager, click on public HTML. Now public HTML is where you have the files access accessible uh, to the world. Now we are inside public HTML. So look for the index.php file. Look for the index.php file that is here. So this is the file that is causing the problem that is going into uh, WordPress instead of Moodle, the index.php file. Okay, so we have it here. So the first thing I'll just do is I'll try to rename this file to something else, maybe index bad, bad index or WordPress index or something like that. Just something different so that it's no longer index.php. So in this case, I'll just call it uh, index hyphen WordPress, just to remind me uh, this is the WordPress file. So once you're able to change uh, the name to what you want, something that is different, just click on enter. Okay. So it refreshes and then you can confirm that the file is no more there. So if you go to the index, if you look for it, so you know, you no longer have an index file and we can prove it by coming to this welcome site and try to refresh. Yeah, I'm seeing something else. So it's the same URL, but I'm no longer able to get to the WordPress. So it's a step further. Uh, sometimes you have to refresh several times or even clear the cache before uh, it finally shows up, but then we are okay. So we'll go to the next step, which is to bring in a new index.php file that has all the Moodle settings in place. Uh, I already have one up in a, in a Google Drive. So I'll just copy the URL. And you can find this URL in the description. I'll just open a new tab, click on it, and enter. Okay, so it tries to load the index.php file. So depending on the type of browser you use, some will load it very easily. You can see it's a PHP file. This is a Moodle file and everything about the configuration is here. So don't worry about what is written on it. Just click on download. So download this index file. So I want to save the file. So just click on save and then click on OK. All right, it's a very short, small file, so the file is here. So I can go to the folder where it is. Okay, so we have the index.php file here in my folder. The next step is to go back to my control panel and now upload this new functional Moodle PHP file that I just downloaded. So to do that, look for the upload button at the top of the file manager, click on the upload button. So it brings an interface where you can drag and drop the files here. Yeah? So I have my downloads already open. So I can simply download the index file I have here to to upload it. It's already 100% concluded. That's it. So it's uploaded. So I can get back to my control panel and refresh it. Okay, so reload 
uh, the files and folders and then since I've uploaded it if I scroll down I should see the new index.php okay so this is my old WordPress index.php and this is a new one I've just uploaded that shows uh, it has uh, Moodle configurations inside so I can now go back and try to load the file that I've been working on since that is the website unisessence.com all things being equal my Moodle site is back it's no longer showing WordPress so problem solved so this is how you can get back your site when an update has overwritten the index.php file on your website so I believe you'll be able to follow the steps that I've outlined here to get back your site so I remain Adewale additional thank you for listening